Mega Man X2. For many years, I had no idea they made more than one X game. They're 16? But it came as no surprise, as the first game would be widely acclaimed by critics and fans alike. Even though they had time to improve upon the first, there'd still be a number of glitches that were left behind. Like this one, where pausing while using a special explosive move will break the graphics. The explosive move is known as Giga Crush. You can obtain it by first defeating Wheel Gator to acquire his spin wheel, then head to Morph Moth stage. Fairly early on, you can use the spin wheel on this part of the floor, where you'll find a secret pathway to a Dr. Light Capsule. Once you collect this move, whenever you're shot by projectiles, your Giga Crush meter will fill up. Fill it up all the way, and you can deal a powerful blast at nearby enemies. But by pausing at roughly the same time as using the Giga Crush move, your weapon's bars will deplete while the game fades to the pause screen. Selecting any other power you have can cause a different range of graphical effects, some being as simple as a color change, but a few others will give off a very broken looking blast. There are other new moves in Mega Man X2. One of these involves being able to dash in the air. Combining this with another upgrade to charge up any weapon we have, we can reach a place the developers intended for you to go, just not in the correct way. First, we'll have to get the mid-air dash. In Overdrive Ostrich's stage, just after this part with all the health power-ups, there's a little cubby hole in the wall. We can break the blocks here once again by using the spin wheel. Here we'll find the Dr. Light Capsule, which will grant us the mid-air dash. Now using the dash, we can head back to Wheel Gator stage, and using it at just the right time after a wall kick, we can make it up to another Light Capsule, this time granting us the Arm Cannon power-up. Finally, in Flame Stag stage, after fighting him and obtaining the Speed Burner, head back into his stage. Throughout the game, you'll also come to find out that there are a few extra villains who are doing the main protagonist Sigma's bidding. They can occasionally show up in any of the stages, in their own special secret spot. Afterwards, you'll exit and continue on with the stage. As it just so happens, you can get to that part of the stage, but not in the intended way. After crossing the treacherous lava river, you'll make it to safety in this rock wall. Charging up the speed burner, You'll want to jump, then mid-air dash in just the right spot, so when you turn around, you can kick off of this short wall. All you have to do now is wall kick away, mid-air dash, then let go of the charged speed burner so you'll dash straight to this moving platform. Here, it's as simple as climbing up a ladder and... Uh... You can't do anything. Well, that was disappointing. Now let's see some glitch audible mentions. Like this one in Bubble Crab Stage where by landing in a certain spot just as the submarine comes out, you'll get caught and the ship's laser will turn on. Normally, you get hit by this, but if you're in the right spot, you can dash right and phase through it. Or how about this one in Crystal Snail's level, where using this robot suit, you can make it to the stack of blocks. Destroy the first couple columns, but as for the third column, only damage the bottom blocks by hitting once. Jump up high enough for this Reflexor to see you and shoot a beam down. And just as you're about to get a hit, hold right and destroy the damaged blocks. When timed right, you should get stuck. And by jumping with the suit, you'll end up falling down further with each jump. Pretty counterintuitive, but moving back and forth can show you just how good of a dancer X can be. <laughs> Sure, those last two didn't do a whole lot, but this next glitch is actually pretty useful, and it's just up the hall and down this corridor. You would normally have to fight this mini-boss, but for whatever reason, shooting a couple Sonic Slicers, which you obtain from Overdrive Ostrich, followed by dashing into the room, it'll just skip the trigger to start this mini-boss, meaning you can bypass having to fight it altogether. I was pretty dumbfounded when I first saw this, and then I watched what the world record holder for the speedrun does, and using the charged up speed burner will grant you the same effect. Now we're starting to get somewhere. There's a moveset you can exploit for a much higher jump, something known as a neon jump. With the arm cannon power up, if you first charge your X Buster all the way, letting go of the shoot button so you'll shoot one shot but still be glowing, jump, dash midair, then on the same frame, jump and shoot. 
This will give you a higher jump, meaning you can reach some places you weren't meant to. It can also come with another benefit. After beating all the Mavericks, that's the name for these bosses, collecting every single upgrade, heart, and sub tank, and beating the three additional villains, which will allow you to collect parts for Zero, X's partner in, well, not crime, you will have just about collected everything in the game, but you won't have 100% completed the game without obtaining one more item, and it can break a ton of stuff. In the third Sigma stage, there are a couple routes you can take later on. Either use the bottom ladder and make it past this section, or keep the moving platform for longer so you can work through the harder top path. I say you have an option, even though you're meant to pick this route, and pass it with full health. You need full health, because after this obstacle course, you can move into this false wall, and there you'll find another light capsule, which will grant you the most broken item in the game, the Shoryuken. If you don't feel like putting yourself through all that, then all you have to do is take the bottom route, and once here, perform a neon jump. Again, you'll need full health for the Shoryuken capsule to appear, but once you've got it, you can start breaking sh- if you don't have your Giga Crush meter filled, you can fill it using a nearby Disc Boy 8. Where the hell do they come up with these names? Who will throw shields at you. When you've been hit in the face enough to fill the meter, make your way to the end of the stage. Be careful not to get hit, as you need your health filled so you can use the Shoryuken, which will be necessary for this next glitch. It's easiest to start by sliding into the door, then when you're just about to touch it, use the Giga Crush. This will open the door, moving X further into the room. This will force the boss to set up to fight sooner, and you can pause just as you're about to fall. Switch over to the X Buster and unpause. The door has been open for a lot longer than it's normally programmed to handle, causing it to visually glitch out. Just as the door is about to reset, you want to perform the Shoryuken. The door resetting itself will cancel the move, However, since you normally have invincibility when performing the Shoryuken, you'll end up keeping it. Now nothing can hurt you. Spikes, projectiles, hell even the floor won't take you out. Since the Shoryuken is a very powerful move, you can take out this boss, Agile, in one hit. However, if you miss it, the fact of doing the Shoryuken again will get rid of your invincibility. Though there's a lot more that this move can do. Right after the boss fight, it'll be time to fight all 8 Mavericks again. You can leave one of them completely defenseless and stuck in the loop. In the Crystal Snail refight, use the Magnet Mine to knock the snail out of his shell. Just as he's about to lose the shell, hit him with a Shoryuken, and just like that, X is now a magician. The snail won't be too happy though, as he'll either jump constantly or lunge in a fit of rage. Either that, or he's just jamming out to the background music. Zero! Wait, no, what the f*** are you doing? I'm on your side! After the Sigma stage with the 8 Mavericks, you'll come to the last level, which for whatever reason is basically Magna Centipede stage. Just as you make it to this midway point, you're forced into a cutscene, which can come out two different ways. If you didn't collect Zero's parts from finding the villains inside the Maverick stages, then the real Zero will show up wanting to fight you due to Sigma's manipulation. But if you did collect the parts, Sigma will show up with a fake Zero, only for the real one to swoop in and kick some ass. For this glitch, you'll want the latter outcome. Dashing into the midway point, you'll want to perform a Shoryuken when you're just in front of the second chair in the background. It's hard, as the game will eventually force you to a standing position, but you have just enough time to pull off the move. Since the punch sends you flying to the right, if you're close enough to fake Zero to touch, or even have an arm wrestle with, the real Zero will drop by and take care of business. But considering you're in front of him, these projectiles will hurt you. You'll be granted the freedom to move around while everyone is talking, but there's not much more you can do. However, pulling off the move not as far to the right, you can fall down while Zero continues to yap, and using another Shoryuken just as Sigma finishes going Hugh Jackman mode, you cannot be touched. This particular invincibility will even change the color of X's buster shot, 
but again, you'll be invincible just as long as you don't do... I've said sure you can now, like, what? Ten times? Well, no, wait, make that eleven. Alright, how do I want to put this? Just as long as you don't do the move again. Genius! I like Mega Man X, and I've developed a soft spot for the sequel, Glitches and All. If you're interested in seeing more content with Mega Man X, original Mega Man, or even anything else, share your thoughts in the comments below. With that being said, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care, and peace.